Good to see you, Ehua, and thank you for joining us. Great to see you. Congratulations on winning a Distinguished Alumni Award for 2023. It's a shame you can't be with us to celebrate in person, but I know you're off doing exciting things elsewhere in the world. So where are you right now and what are you doing? Um, yeah, right now I'm here in Southern California where I live um, and uh, just a little south of LA, north of San Diego. Um, we um, happen to live in a, like a fantastic location here but um one that's you know pretty proximate to the things i'm involved with including plenty where our first um and, and the world's largest vertical farm is operational in the city the famous city of compton um in central la so that's that's where i am so tell us more about plenty you said a vertical farm what is that um so it's really a new way of doing indoor agriculture as we you know get hit with greater challenges and I, I know Aotearoa New Zealand's had its share of weather challenges in the last couple mm. of years it seems uh, really as we look around the world the weather's getting less predictable and farming which is you know enterprise taken and undertaken globally in every country you know, we all need to we all need to eat and farmers have played that role of providing food into our communities you know for many many millennia growing outdoors well as we think about how we deal with climate impact, uh, we deal also with how do we get food that is often seasonal, made available all year round, how do we do it with no pesticides, um, with less water use, with less land use. Um, these are all things that you know, we're using technology to solve for at plenty. And um, today, uh, apologies for the promo behind me, um, but today we, you know, we sell leafy greens to major retailers like Walmart and Whole Foods here in the United States. Um, so yeah, we're a technology company developing new solutions for producing fresh fruit, vegetables, plants in like highly controlled indoor settings, highly automated, using LEDs rather than the sun, um, not using soil. Um, so really a pretty different way of tackling agriculture and food production. And sort of to make the point, you know, the first person to actually touch the food is the consumer so literally the entire process is automated through robotics you know from seed all the way through to harvest so not the way i probably thought about agriculture when um we were rattling around the par garden and tuna and wawa and go away um it's pretty different from that <laughs> so you've mentioned already this is a far cry from growing up on the par at home and working in the US is certainly a long way from home where you grew up in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So Nohia Kwe, where are you from, Arama? Where did you uh, grow up and and what was that like with your whanau and hapuri? Yeah, uh, well, um, you know, I, I grew up in uh, Ngaroa here in the Waikato, but our, our whanau include Maniapoto, Parihaka on the Taranaki side of our whanau and then Te Apoi, up in the far north and my family is pretty connected to um, all of those iwi, um, but I grew up you know, in the in Ngaroa here originally. Um, went to went to school at Hamilton Boys, where I was you know head boy there and had um, like a, a great education, and then found myself um, and looking at universities to go to, um, being really attracted to Victoria, partly because I actually I was born in Whanganui Atara, my father mother lived there for a number of years before we went back home and um and so yeah we've got a got a deep connection to wellington uh, it's my other home if i was honest about it so yeah i wish i was there with wish i was there hanging out with you tonight that's for sure <laughs> so let's 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 move to that time that period of your life where you were in te whanganui atara where you you turned up to the heading Waka victoria university of wellington as a bright-eyed first-year student, what what were you doing at the university in those days? Um, and maybe share a few memorable moments with us. Oh well, there were quite a few of those. Like I, I, I think you know when um you you know you move into your first um you know leaving home experience and going into you know education, higher education. Well, firstly, let's just be honest. I think the first year is a bit of a blur because it's you know frankly all about having. No, maybe fun more than it is about getting good grades but so we eventually figured out that actually you had to balance the fun to grades ratio in favor of getting better grades um, and I studied both commerce uh, and and law which um, 
yeah, was as I look back at it, I probably think I should have followed my instinct to go and do more science as well mm -hmm. too, because I've ended up actually spending a lot of my career in science and innovation focused disciplines. But look, you know, Victoria was a fantastic community to join at the time. You know, um, we also, I think, saw like a first flush of um, more Maori students coming into the university, which you know, you know yourself has has been like an evolutionary journey at the university. But one that you know, I, I look back now, and and there were just some amazing um, students coming through the programs, and people that have, in many cases, become lifelong friends um, for me as well too. So. You know, as far as memorable moments, I also just have to say, um, you know, look back at the caliber of educate educators that we had and have in the university system. And I'm, you know, again, just very humbled to receive this award, but also to look back and um, and just recognize the the high caliber of educators who really profoundly changed my life, whether it was uh, Joe Williams um, tuning me up in legal system and legals, um, or whether it was actually, I have to say, um, Special shout out to uh, on the law side to John Preble. I would never have imagined you could make tax law sound interesting, and even when I say it, it sounds kind of stupid. But actually, you know, um, this was sort of about the passion that people had for their subjects, and I think on the commerce side, you know, um, professors like uh, John Brocklesby, um, John Davies, Di Gilbertson, and and many others, you know, had uh, a big effect, particularly in interesting me in the area of entrepreneurship, which. Um, I think as I came out of the university system, you know, I think I realized at some point I wanted to be an entrepreneur and um, start and build businesses, which is really what I've spent most of the last 30 years doing. So I think, you know, Vic takes a lot of credit for putting me on that track. Kawhi, kawhi. You've since gone on to uh, spend really an entire career pushing boundaries and creating change as an entrepreneur, as a leader, and uh, as a mentor for others. So what advice do you have now uh, for people who want to make change in the world and, and maybe sort of follow in your footsteps? Yeah, it's it's a great question. Look, I think, you know, the the journey for me has been a really diverse one and one where Personally, I haven't tried to plan next iterations of my career, like down to like fine levels of detail. I've sort of found areas that I found personally interesting, not only, you know, from a standpoint of being in business and doing well, but wanting to have an opportunity to do something impactful. One of the exciting things, I guess, about being in, you know, the NFL or venture capital in the United States, um, Silicon Valley, founding a venture firm, building what building multiple funds, now building companies, is that um you're invariably surrounded by amazing talent. And um quite often, you know, you're the at least I found for me anyway, you know, far from being the smartest person in the room. So, you know, there are a lot of people that you're able to absorb and learn from with shared values, like finding people that you connect with intellectually, um, emotionally at a values level, super, super important. And then the other thing for me has always been the desire to have a connection with and the ability to take what I'm working on and, and find an expression and value for it back at home. So mm -hmm. again, like I think it's you know, so humbling, but also it means a lot to get the recognition um, from Victoria, but also just a reminder of how important um, it is to, you know, to share what I've learned back with, um, particularly back with uh, Māori entrepreneurs um, and also with um, you know, the many amazing leaders we have leading in so many disciplines. Um, you know, New Zealand, Aotearoa has made, notwithstanding what seems to be a, a difficult political moment going on right now, boy, the um, the progress by Māori leadership in, at home has been incredible and it's, it's great to be in a small part of it. Sounds fabulous. I'm looking forward to hearing more about the, the results, the outcomes of all of this uh, development and support. Um, it leaves me with just a couple of couple of questions to finish off, Arama. What's next for Arama Kukutai? I, I, I'm getting a sense that you don't rest on your laurels, that there's always more to do. So where are you looking to next? Uh, well, the, you know, we've got a big job in front of us with Plenty. We, you know, um, have about 500 people or so in the company now, but are looking to take the business um, nationwide here in the US, but also global. So that's going to be a big focus for me for the next few years. 
Tiana Portiki, obviously, but um, importantly, you know, I've got a young family as well too. So, you know, um, that's a that's a major for me. Luckily, we we live in like a place that's got three hundred days a year of sunshine. So, getting outside and enjoying life is um, is not a big challenge. I mean, longer term, I'd really like to um, spend more time in um, mentoring, coaching, uh, growing the nonprofit I just mentioned, um, and and spending more time at home. So I've been away nearly well over 20 years now and uh still think of Aotearoa as home so um this is my other home and love it here my family loves it here but I do plan to spend more time at home in, in Aotearoa so uh, see you for that flat white soon I hope <laughs> can't I wait. you're always welcome here we'd love to have a visit from you um final reflections now what does winning this distinguished alumni award mean for you uh, well, it's a surprise to be quite honest because I feel like I've been been gone so long that it's it's nice to be um, remembered in a way. I think maybe more importantly than the award for me personally, it was really exciting to um, to talk to Nick and to John and others in your leadership there um, at a challenging time for the university, but really having a vision for being what's part of the next evolution and and frankly vision for creating deeper ties between the community and education I, I personally got to benefit from that but I think you know um, frankly the future of a country like New Zealand or any country really rests in nurturing the talent um, that we have and, and I think you know it's an exciting time of opportunity for New Zealand and for the university so as much as it's humbling to receive the, the award I actually like to push back um, the praise the other way and say you know I think University is set for a fantastic next evolution, and I'm just honoured and proud to be part of the alumni, and, and uh, here to support any way I can the growth of the university's you know, benefit to the community, and particularly to the Māori community. So, how far? I'm sure we'll take you up on that. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Adama, for your impressive mahi and for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us today. Um, congratulations again on being a distinguished alumni for 2023. Ngā mihi nui ki a koe. Sure. Kia ora.